Okay, here we go. 5.3 through 5.4. 3 through 5.4. This uh, unit only takes us five instructional days, which would be today, tomorrow, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which means study guide on Thursday and test on Friday. But I'm told that some people are going uh, to the wrestling match. So I just, out of curiosity, we're not canceling school for the wrestling match. If we would, I would postpone anything I had. But just out of curiosity, who's planning not being here next Thursday? Okay, hands down. Raise your hand if you're planning on not being here next Friday. Okay. Very good. So I'll figure something out. We'll see where we're at. I don't know for sure, but I do know this. This will go very quickly, okay? It'll go very quickly. So I think that the average score, I think that this test is worth 54 points. I think the average score is generally 53. Um, all right, let's graph sine and let's graph cosine. Let's start by making a table. X and sine of X, we're going to plug in certain values. And I'm going to start by plugging in uh, zero radians. Then I'm going to plug in pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, and pi over two radians. So as you look at your unit circle sheet, my good friend Haley Harms has hers out. And uh, she's looking at it. Do you remember in the unit circle, assign the Y value, the X value, what is it? It's the y value. So as you go around the unit circle, um, what is the sine of zero? Very good. What's the sine of pi over six? A half sine of pi over four. What? And two over two, pi over three. And sine of pi over two, one. And if we actually made these into decimals, you know, we'd have 0 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.86, 1. So what we're going to literally do is we're going to unravel the unit circle onto the x-axis. <coughs> Mark 2 pi. 1 pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and put 1 and negative 1. So, the sine of 0 was 0, so I have a coordinate 0, 0. Pi over 6 is a third of the way to pi over 2, and I go up to a half. Pi over 4 is halfway, so it's 0.7. Pi over 3 would be right about here, 0.86. What a dog. Hey, Garrett, I asked a question. <laughs> 0, 0. Pi over 6.5. Pi over 4.7, pi over 3.86, pi over 2, 1. Got it? I would be happy to answer questions, but I need specific ones. Anna? No? Oh, I thought you said you had a question. Okay, so those are the points that I get. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right now and have you look at your unit circle. What happens as you continue around to the other side? What happens to the y values? They go back down, right? In fact, what is the sign of pi as you look at the unit circle? What's the y value at pi? It's at zero. So it's going to come back down to that spot right there. Okay. And it's going to cover these same values, 1 half, square 3 over 2, all that stuff. After it gets past pi, look at your y values. What happens to the y values after pi? Yeah, they become negative. 
in fact, the sine of 3 pi over 2, what is the y value at 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. And then we go back to the y value of 2 pi, which was back at 0. Can you see the type of shape it's going to make? It's a wave. Every once in a while, you come across something in, in mathematics that is highly applicable to the real world. For example, today we talked about in uh, algebra correlation between different things. For example, correlation between temperature and number of people at the pool during the summer. High correlation between those things. Correlation between height of a student and score in a on a pre-calculus test. No correlation, right? Correlation is something you use a lot. Uh, sine waves, something you use a lot. Okay. For example, did you know that as I speak to you, that sound travels as a wave? Did you know that light travels as a wave? Did you know that as you look at like seismic activity of earthquakes, that, that travels as a wave? So you, everything can be modeled mathematically. So as, as I speak to you, my voice has a certain sign equation that we can map it to that shows exactly how it travels from here to your ears. Okay? Um, it has a certain amplitude, has a certain period. All that comes into play. Um, it's very, very applicable. Now, let's try to draw some connections here, and then we'll speed things up a little bit. But if you look at pi over 2 and pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, those kind of mark my quadrants, don't they? The sign have to do with x or y? It has to do with y. Um, where is y positive? Which quadrants? 1 and 2. So look, the graph in the first quadrant is above the x-axis. Second quadrant, above the x-axis. Where is sine negative? Third and fourth. Well, third quadrant, fourth quadrant, it's below the x-axis. And it continues on. Can you go around the circle more than once? And it'll cover those same values. So it will just continue on and on and on forever in each direction. So over the given interval of 0 to 2 pi, our sine function has a maximum value of 1, a minimum value of negative 1, an amplitude of 1, and a period of 2 pi. Amplitude means the distance from the middle of the wave to its highest point or its lowest point. And as you can see in this situation, it's 1. Period is how often it repeats itself. Well, some people say that it repeats pi. Uh-uh. It has to go above and below before it repeats itself. So once every two pi, it repeats itself. Is that clear? Okay. Amplitude is the distance from the center of the graph to its highest point or lowest point. Okay. Let's do cosine. And now for cosine, I'm going to, again, make a table, but I'm going to make the table a little bit differently. x would be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So you tell me, what is the cosine of 0? Is cosine the x value or the y value? Is the x value, what is the x value at 0 radians? It's 1. How about up at pi over 2? The, cord, the x or the uh, y value is 0. How about at pi? What's the x value? Negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, what's the x value? 0. And at 2 pi, what's the x value? 1. So as we plot these, you have the coordinate 0, 1. Pi over 2, 0. Pi negative 1. 3 pi over 2, 0 and 2 pi, 1. And you're going to cover all those other things in between, like square root of 2 over 2, and square root of 3 over 2, and 1 half, and the positives and the negatives. But you can see that this graph doesn't look anything like the previous graph. Oh. 
Watch this. Oh, well, I wait for this every year. So. Oh, see? It's right over the other graph, doesn't it? It's the identical graph, it's just shifted. Just shifted pi over two units, that's it, okay? Same graphs, just shifted. So I'm gonna put it back down, and now we'll draw some inferences. Pole sign has to do with x. Where is x positive? Which quadrants? One and four. Look, the graph is positive. It's above the x-axis in the first quadrant and in the fourth. Cosine is negative in the second and the third. There it's below the x-axis. These are the parent graphs for sine and cosine. Over the interval 0 to 2 pi, cosine also has a maximum value of 1. It has a minimum value of negative 1. It has an amplitude of 1, and it has a period of 2 pi as well. It's very similar to the sine graph. It's just shifted pi over two units. And we'll talk about horizontal shifts later on. Please now flip to the second to last page of your notes. And you should see a sheet of notes that says trigonometric parent functions, graphs, and notes. This is something that you get to uh, use on the test. You can see that I give to you the graphs. Um, I drew in some x and y axes here because it's a little difficult to see, but those are the parent functions. As you look at the bottom, if you want to rip this out, you can as well, but I tell you how to graph sine and cosine. I tell you what the amplitude and the period are and everything else. This is a sheet that you'll want to become very familiar with, very familiar with. So people find this to be helpful over the course of the year. Uh, we will also be graphing tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, stuff of that nature. Okay. So uh, we flip back to the front, and we'll decide these couple things. Don't write this down. Y equals A times the sine of BX minus C plus D. Eventually, I want you to be able to graph Sine functions and cosine functions that have a vertical shift, or I'm sorry, a vertical stretch, a horizontal stretch, a horizontal shift, and a vertical shift. I want you to be able to do all of them. Today we're going to start basic. We are simply going to look at vertical and horizontal stretches. So in this case, we will apply multiplying by A in front and B uh, on the X. When we do that, the amplitude is the absolute value of the number in front. So all I do is take, so it's always positive. Amplitude is always positive. It's the same for cosine. The period, you take 2 pi, because that's what its period is normally, and you divide it by whatever the b value is. So, um, we're going to do a little exercise right now so you can get your mind over the repetitions that a function has. The very last page of your notes is something you can work on with a partner right now. And what I have is a bunch of different functions that are sine and cosine, and they have different periods. And there's different ways to calculate a period by looking at the graph. I'm going to do two with you, and then you guys are going to try some on your own. Some are harder than others. Okay. Let's look at the first two. You tell me when this graph starts to repeat itself. Tell me when, when I've done one full cycle. Yeah. So, how long did it take for it to do one cycle? Yeah, that's pi units. It's half of 2 pi. So the period in this situation is equal to pi. 
Now, some people don't like to look at that spot because it doesn't have a tick mark on it. Well, let me show you another way to think about it, okay? How many cycles are completed? How many cycles are completed by the time it gets to 4 pi? 4 cycles. 4 pi over 4 is pi. So if it completes 4 cycles in 4 pi, it repeated itself every pi. We're also able to look at it and determine that. Look at the next one. Does it have a full cycle shown on the graph? It does not. In fact, if I draw this portion, how much of a cycle is this? It's half of a cycle. So if it completes half of a cycle in 4 pi, how many cycle or how, how long will it take to complete one full cycle? 8 pi. So your period is 8 pi. In fact, we said 4 pi and there was one half of a cycle, so therefore 8 pi. Uh, try with your friends. Take, you know, Three minutes. See if we can do them all. Go. Okay. So, looks like it took one pi for it to repeat itself, right? Now, this one. It doesn't have a tick mark place for you. Well, you can go ahead and put your own tick marks in. There's there's no law against that, right? But I'll show you two ways of doing it. First of all, one, two, three, and four. So in the interval three pi, how many repetitions did it have? Four. So your period is 3 pi over 4. Now, watch this. So when I did the problem originally, that's not what I did. When I did the problem, here's what I did. I looked at halfway in between. What's half of 3 pi? Or 3 pi over 2? Well, what's half of 3 pi over 2? 3 pi over right half of 3 pi over 2 is 3 pi over 4 so you can see that you know if you just make the tick marks you can find it as well uh, this one right here let's see that would be half of pi over 7 right which is what Power 14. What? What, Hannah? Okay, this one repeated itself every six. Nope, there's no pie. pi. Look at this one, okay? There's, there's no tick marks here. It's kind of tough to figure them out. So within the interval 8, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look at this one. Is there a full cycle how much of the cycle is there so you would need twice that amount right so twice of pi over nine is two pi over nine double that question no high five high five for cali cali give him a high five there you go okay all right good exercise move back to the this page You can find the period by looking at the graph. You can also find it by looking at the equation. 
In this example, we want to identify the period and the amplitude for the following graphs. So the period and the amplitude. What is the amplitude, if you remember from your notes before? Absolute value of 2, which is 2. And to find the period, you take 2 pi and you divide it by 3. That's the number of repetitions that it has within 2 pi. So the period is 2 pi over 3. How's that? Okay, what's the amplitude of this one? Period? We don't we don't write it over x. This is just negative three cosine of one fourth x. So you can divide it by a fourth. What's two pi divided by a fourth? Eight pi. Because dividing by a fourth is the same as multiplying by four. Very good. C, what's the amplitude? One. It's English for uno. Yeah. No, the x is a variable. So just like for slope, if I asked you to identify the slope of y equals 2x plus 3, you would tell me 2 over 1, not 2x. period, we take 2 pi and divide it by, yeah, so I'm going to write 2 pi over 1 divided by 2 pi over 5. Well, there's a pi there, right? Look on your sheet, it's probably easier. Yep, so multiply by 5 over 2 pi, and we get 5. The period is 5. D, what's the amplitude? 1 fourth. And the period would be 2 pi over pi, which is dose. So what if I told you that some of your test questions will be like that? You'd be really happy about that? All right. Well, then look happy. Turn that frown upside down, Devin. He never turned his frown upside down. Oh. Oh. You poor, poor child. All right, so we're going to now graph these functions. Uh, I'm going to label the amplitude of the period. What is the amplitude of the first one? 1 and the period. 2 pi. Now, it repeats itself every 2 pi, so I mark off 2 pi. And how many quadrants does it take for a sign to repeat itself? Four quadrants. So I'll divide it up into four parts. It does matter if it's negative. Very good. If your negative is in front, what does it do? It flips it over the x-axis. So instead of starting by going up, it will go down. So if, if you look here, does sine start at the top or bottom, or does it start at the middle? Remember looking at your parent function? Yep, because if you think about it, what is the sine of 0? Sine of 0 is 0. So, and then the sine of pi over 2 was... So if I'm on the unit circle and I move to pi over 2, what is the y value at 90 degrees? 1. one. So sine of pi over 2 is 1, but then it makes it negative, so negative 1. So you can see it flips it upside down. 
So you can see that I'm continuing to reference terminal points and things of that nature from your last test. And unfortunately, I'd love to spend a whole month on that topic, but um, we just do not have that kind of time. So. Pretty cool. Monica, you like my graph? How about yours? Is it better or worse? It's a little bad? Okay. Let's well, your practice, okay? What? Oh, sh my good friend Hannah has a question, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you exactly how I get it. I count. Watch. Okay. You got to learn how to count right. See how I got two pi? See how I divide and have to get pi? See how I divide and have to get pi over two? Now count. One pi over two. Two pi over two. Three pi over two. Four pi over two. Oh, how did I get that? What is, well, first of all, what we did is we just flipped it upside down, okay? So we took our sign graph and flipped it upside down. But if you want to know how we get this value, Hannah, what is the sign of 3 pi over 2? What's the sign of 3 pi over 2? And then you make it negative, so you get positive 1. All right. Next one, what's the amplitude? 3, what's the period? 2 pi, mark it off, divide it into four sections because it takes four quadrants to repeat itself. From our parent function that we just drew before that. Cosine is positive in the first, negative in the second, negative in the third, positive in the fourth. And then it starts all over again. So it takes four quadrants for cosine to repeat itself. Yes, Garrett. Yeah, we'll graph the last one on our calculator to show you how accurate we are because that's cool. All right, cosine, what's the cosine of zero? What's the x value at zero? One. So the cosine of zero is one times three is three. So you can see cosine starts either at the max or the min, depending on the value. Where do you think it goes from there? Do you, th do you think it, yeah, it does. It, it's gonna go down towards the minimum, but before it gets to the minimum, it has to cross over zero. So it crosses over here, and it gets to the bottom at 5. Where do you think it goes from there? Very good. It's got to cross over 0 in order to get back to the top. Again, this is the kind of stuff you bring this home and show us to mom and dad. Like, wow, you must be really intelligent. You're graphing curvy things, and you have pies all over the place. Talking about amplitude. Oh, wow. wow. I like it. Don't even talk. Okay. Amplitude. Four. Period. Dose. Mark it off. Four and negative four. Period is two. Divide it up into four pieces. What's half of two? One. So I have one half, and then you, you can count. One half, two halves, three halves. Cool. Well, come on. Can you count by threes? Teaching your kids at age four to count by threes is challenging. You say, can you count by halves? Oh, well, that sounds really confusing. No, one half, two half, three half, four half, five half. Right, it's, it's easy, right? Just count. Just count. All right, so sign, is it going to start at the top, the bottom, or the middle? Very good. And is this one going to head on up, or is it going to head on down? Why? Positive. You guys are smart. You guys must have had a really good college algebra teacher. Ooh. <laughs> Note to self, call Riverwood, tell him to get rid of the transcript.
That's not a Annika, that's not a very good one, is it? You yours is better. Ooh. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, maybe some push ups. Okay. Well contest on the last one, okay? Contest on the last one. I will beat you. Okay. Amplitude. Two. Period. Six pi. Why? You flip it over. That was that was a really good answer that was stated very poorly. Come on, tell me more, Katie. Come on, Rass. Okay, then flip it for the reciprocal. Okay, I got it. Okay, so two pi over one third, same as multiplying by three, so I get six pi. You are super smart. I plot out six pi, and then I've got three pi, and this is three pi over two, and and I can count. Three pi over two, six pi over two. Not seven. Try get three pi over two, six pi over two, nine <laughs> pi over two. <laughs> I'm going by three pi over two for crying out loud. Up to two, down to negative two. All right. Sorry, I gotta stand in front of here. It's, it's hard when I stand on the side. Uh, what uh, what, what what where do I start? Where do I start? Top or bottom, middle, bottom. Where is it gonna go? Is it gonna go up or down? It's gonna go up because cosine normally goes down, but because it's negative, it's gonna flip. It's gonna go up. There's no way yours is better than mine. Honestly. There's no way. No possible way. Whatever. No. Haley doesn't. No. Uh-uh. Nope. All right. Watch this. I go into mode. I check radians. I go into y equals, and I type in negative 2 cosine of x divided by 3. Yep, we're in radians now because that's what we're marking there. If I go into window, I could type in an x minimum of say negative three pi on x max of six pi i've got a tick mark every three pi divided by two my y min is negative two my y max is two it looks like i have a tick mark every two hold on look is that not what i have sketched right here essentially yes here's your homework the top one, the bottom one is tomorrow. You can write them both down if you want. Oh, wow. No, she's not sending it out. She wants people to take responsibility for their own assignments. What do you want? Ooh. Raise your hand if you believe her. Nobody does. Yeah, I'll take it. 